What's up guys, back again with another video. Do you own an Amiga 500 and want to do more with it than just play games from floppy disk? Or maybe you just picked up an Amiga 500 for the first time and don't really know what to do with it. Well in today's video I want to show you a new piece of hardware that I just picked up. This is the individual computers ACA 500 Plus. Individual computers have come out of the blocks with an awesome piece of hardware. You may remember that I reviewed the original ACA 500 about 3 years ago. Review is a loose term since the video was pretty bad. It was a great device however that provided you with a slightly accelerated Amiga 500 with a few megs of fast RAM. The ability to utilize Amiga A1200 trapdoor accelerators in your A500, but it did have its limitations. For me, I felt like the standalone hardware wasn't really that impressive, and worst case, it was kind of useless without an Amiga 1200 accelerator. Enter the individual computer's ACA 500 Plus. For around 140 US dollars, here is the feature list, and it's pretty damn impressive. This is what you get. A 68,000 CPU clocked at 14 MHz with an overclock of up to 42 MHz. An Amiga 1200 compatible clock port, a local 16-bit expansion port, an A1200 CPU connector card. I'm told compatibility is much improved with non-individual computers accelerators. Two compact flash connectors for fast and easy loading of hard disk images. Okay, so so far that's not really that different from the original ACA 500, so what makes this cooler? Overclock speeds of up to 42 MHz on a standard 68000. 8 MB of fast RAM is on board. If you have an Amiga A500 with 512K RAM expansion in the trapdoor, it will automatically convert it to chip RAM without any hardware modifications. You also get a very large flash ROM which contains licensed Kickstarts 1.2 1.3 and 3.1 as well as a full OS 3.1 installer for those people who lost their discs. With this now you can easily insert a compact flash card and be up and running with an Amiga hard disk in minutes without needing Win UAE or anything else. Pretty impressive. And personally the coolest feature for me at least is the built-in action replay freezer cartridge in flash and in this video i'll show you a couple of things that it's capable of doing installing the card is very simple just plug it in on the side expansion port on your amiga a500 powering up the amiga you are greeted with the aca500 plus configuration menu and all the options now the first thing i try is the overclocking feature of the card at 14 megahertz we are getting around 1400 mips which is identical to the ACA500. Cranking up the speed, however, to 28 MHz, SysInfo gives us around 3000 MIPS, and also take note of the hard drive transfer speeds. It's a very nice 3.7 MB per second. Going all the way to 42 MHz, it rounds out at around 3300 MIPS. Obviously this isn't a pinch on an 030 accelerator, but have you ever heard of a 68000 running at 42 MHz? That's pretty damn cool. Also, the compact flash hard drive speed is even better at 4.5 MB per second. This is seriously faster than many buffered IDE and ultra-wide SCSI card adapters I've tested in the past. And for the next thing I try is WHD load. Now WHD load was not possible on a standalone ACA 500 due to the lack of fast memory. Now with the plus and the eight megabytes of fast memory on board, this works great. I tried a bunch of games and everything worked as expected. Now WHD load lists the 68010 processor as a minimum requirement for using the quit key to return to the Amiga's workbench. 
The ACA500 Plus, however, has special circuitry that lets you use the WHD load quit key at any time, even though you only have a 68000 processor. Pretty cool stuff. The Action Replay Freezer Cart functionality is a very nice feature. Action Replay was an integral part of most crackers back in the day and it's very cool to see it being added as part of the package. It's a very nice way to learn about 68000 programming as well, and also the custom chips in the Amiga and how things work in general. Enabling it in the menu you can easily freeze to the Action Replay at any time. In this example I simply load up the game Gods by the Bitmap Brothers and type in the word Tracker which will attempt to rip any songs in chip memory. And for the last thing I want to try was the functionality of having the Workbench 3.1 discs in flash and how easy it was to set up a new compact flash hard drive with an OS 3.1 image on it. As you can imagine it was pretty easy to do once you actually load into the Workbench image all the discs are already mounted for you so there's no need to actually go ahead and insert any floppies into the disk drive whatsoever. So it's just a simple matter of configuring the compact flash card as you normally would when you're setting one up on WinUAE or a normal Amiga computer and just going through the same process as before. The cool part is the discs are automatically mounted for you and there's nothing else to do. This is a really cool feature and it's very nice to have this because there's a lot of people out there that don't have workbench discs or don't have an easy way of getting ADF files onto original discs so they can actually have a bootable workbench set of discs in their collection to utilize. And unfortunately I still couldn't get my Blizzard 1260 to boot with the ACA500 Plus. Now I'm not sure if this is an issue with my power supply but I am using an original A500 power supply but it doesn't seem like there's enough juice to power both the ACA500 and the Blizzard 1260. Alright guys, so in conclusion, what do I think of the ACA500 Plus by individual computers? Well, as you've probably noticed, I'm very impressed with this piece of hardware. But individual computers did listen to their customers and put in a lot of really cool features. And this is truly a standalone card. My biggest criticism with the ACA500 was it was not really a standalone card. You couldn't really do much with it as a standalone. You had to incorporate a A1200 accelerator. Otherwise the thing was kind of useless by itself. You don't actually need an Amiga 1200 accelerate card at all. It runs just fine. And with the uh, 42 megahertz overclock, this is a great card to have. Uh, obviously it's not up there with the faster 020 and 030 accelerators, but it's a pretty good kick in the pants nonetheless for a stock 68,000 CPU. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this particular video. Let me know what you thought of the ACA 500 plus in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe if you like my channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.